institutes play a major role in shaping the developmental trajectory of a nation from nurturing minds that becomes flag bearers of innovation to set up research centers that provide space for these innovations to happen primary institutes of india occupy the center stage when it comes to making the nation atmanirbhar in a free willing conversation with professor v kamakoti director of iit madras pbns discusses the technological solutions that are shaping india's innovative minds and developing the prime sectors for economic growth such as healthcare and it professor kamakoti tells us how technology is bridging gaps in the healthcare sector giving the example of kadam india's first and indigenous polycentric prosthetic knee designed by r2d2 of iit madras technology has been uh, one of the prime uh, you know prime mover for major uh, uh, discoveries in medicine for example cause and effect relationship right so this particular habit causes this particular disease there have been technology interventions that have been responsible for this and that is uh, that is precisely the reason why technological schools technology schools like the iits and the indian institute of science we need to have medical discipline inside us and uh, as you see now uh, many of our schools are started to have uh, a, a medical school inside iits inside iisc and these moves have started happening and that's really for good uh the outcome of that uh, these type of uh, what you call as a cross uh, fertilization of ideas uh, lead to very very important powerful products that would essentially be of very important utility to mankind to the society at large kadam is one very interesting very important thing as you see you know uh, uh, if if the person actually wears a full pant right you never know that he has a artificial feet there right so that is so then you see the confidence in the way they walk uh, uh, so it brings in lot more confidence uh, uh, inside them i think that is a big transform and i am very very happy i congratulate my colleague sujata for this uh, very uh, meticulous development right it's not a, though the whole product looks simple so many intricacies were taken care of uh, uh f- first and foremost uh, the the artificial uh, f- uh, feet uh, uh, leg should not hurt the the whenever you are going to tie it up with the uh, uh, with the body at that part it should not hurt then the gait is very very important so a lot of experiments had gone a lot of precision manufacturing has gone and uh, so that is something phenomenal and uh, i am very happy that iit madras has come out with this wonderful product technology today is being used to create ease of living for citizens where institutes like iits are playing a key role in setting up centers for research in these domains giving the example of rt due to professor kamakoti deliberates on how such research centers are able to develop innovations in interdisciplinary areas today everything is more of interdisciplinary in nature so if you just look at it's a very cro- uh, important uh, there the, there are people with uh, mechanical engineering background materials background and then uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, human anatomy background the medical background uh, and also you know uh, within medical there's a orthopedics background so these are many things that come across to make such a product so centers of this interdisciplinary nature need to grow up and uh, many faculty have to come together many different as uh, engineering plus many other different fields have to come together to actually bring out a product of this sort so to answer your question yes such centers are welcome and many such centers have to come every iit should have at least one such center working on this aspect uh, so one of the things that uh, r2d2 is doing is uh, about uh, these type of uh, mechanical engineering dominant uh, product creation right so so if you look at the artificial uh, uh, feet or or the uh, standing chair uh, which uh, you know uh, professor sujata's team had come out these are all completely driven by mechanical engineering right and sujata's background is also mechanical uh, similarly there is also a lot of electronics 
intervention here. And then there are metallurgical, chemical, biological interventions in terms of in, uh, implants that are done inside the body, right? So, 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 so there are a lot of scope for, see, after all, health is very important, right? So there are a lot of scope for multiple disciplines to come together and solve uh, many health-related issues. And we sincerely hope that that be an electronic center uh, for for uh, medical devices. There is one in IIT. We have the Health Technology Innovation Center, and then we have uh, uh, Sudha Gopalakrishnan Brain Center, which are discussing more about the compute and electronics part of health. Right? And then uh, there is also a lot of work that are done by, for implants uh, inside the body by the material scientists. Startups can play a bigger role in building a robust ecosystem for innovation and growth. Professor Kamakoti says they intend to reach a stage where the institutes can incubate some 1,000 startups per year. We have a very defined process, uh, process and we are now putting it into practice in a very big way. And that is how last year we have uh, incubated more than 100 startups. So every three days, once in three days, there is a startup that is being incubated. So that's how we have started. And this year we want to touch, in, in a few years, we want to touch 1,000 startups per year. Uh, any, any of these products done at an academic institution need to go to the market. Now, academic institutions are not just doing, so we say there's something called technology readiness level. And uh, uh, in some years before, uh, say a decade before, academic institutions were involved in, uh, uh, you know, projects which are TRL 1, 2, 3 or so, that level. Now, we are looking at TRL 5 within the institute. And how is it possible? We have a clear-cut mechanism for how to achieve that. So, right from an idea, origination of an idea, we go and uh, basically have uh, mechanisms. Now, we have an uh, AI-based tool, an indigenous AI-based tool uh, developed by a startup in India again, uh, 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 which, which basically tells how novel your idea is, right? And, uh, and what are your competing ideas? And then, so that is that. Then, we have a, a small organization inside IIT, a, a, a center called Nirman, which basically converts these prototypes, uh, which ideas to a sort of a prototype. And from there, uh, they can go to multiple incubators inside IIT Madras. We have five, five incubators. We have a bio incubator. We have a health technology incubator. Then we have a cyber physical system incubator. Then we also... Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, have a rural technology in incubator and then we have IIT Madras incubation cell. So five incubators exist. So then they can go to these incubators and basically get their company incorporated. And then we have uh, Gopalakrishnan Deshbande Center for Innovation. This is again funded by two of our distinguished alumni, uh, uh, where which will help them to grow the company uh, to a next stage. Right. So so all this we are taking care of and. Finally, when these products have to go to the market, uh, the startups have to come. So that's why we are saying that uh, when we take such large projects, as, as you would have seen in the case of Sujata's uh, demonstration itself, there will be PhD students, MS students who will be involved in that project. And these are the people, these are the ambassadors who will take it to the market and make a startup out of it and uh, take the benefits. What could be the next phase of synergetic growth in the domains of quantum computing, robotics, AI, machine learning, big data, 5G, and their implementation in communication via AR and VR? Professor Kamakoti explains how a synergy between these areas of computer learning could also have a greater implication on the growth of diversified sectors. So there is a lot of synergy between many, many things today, right? So today, ag precision agriculture uh, depends on AI, right? So, so very simple example. Precision agriculture depends on robotics. Robotics depends on AI, right? Uh, uh, say, for example, I want to find the cro uh, crop, uh, uh, crop yield, right? So I actually fly, I fly a drone. Drone is a mechanical entity which has a communication. Uh, uh, so, which has an electronics and communication uh, uh, stuff, right? We need to control the drone. And then from there, there is an image camera which takes uh, pictures. And then there is a camera, pro there's an image processing that happens, which again computation, right? And then uh, some AI based tool will know. So, we go and keep scanning the uh, 
lakhs of acres per day it's not every fellow can look at it so we have an ai based tool which has a knowledge of a good crop and a bad crop and then it uh, classifies this as bad and then we can inform the farmer hey there's a problem here why don't you go and look into it so it's something like we want to do a morning surveillance of the field of a village and then inform all the farmers hey guys see these are all the points that there are certain issues just go and uh, you know uh, take care there's a pest uh, uh, pest in these uh, particular farms or fields etc right so this is something i'm just giving you a problem so there is a synergy you now at least four or five disciplines have come together right uh, the the niche areas that we are talking ai robotics uh, uh, you know uh, 5g and uh, you know <laughs> precision agriculture all have come together here so so that is precisely what we have done uh, uh, as an educational institution what we have done is we now have nine such interdisciplinary courses it gone are the days where i say i am a computer scientist it doesn't mean anything today i am an engineer to, uh, the, uh, who understands lot of things around computer science and finally will be effective to make a system right that will work so that is that is the state where we have reached and i think that is one part the second part is there are a lot of exploratory research that is also happening research is key right if you don't do research we don't have tomorrow right so the other important areas like quantum Uh, is now coming up there are quantum computers that are being built but, but in addition there are a lot of research work uh, blue sky research that is happening very exploratory very visionary researches that are happening and that is another uh, uh, another very important thing uh, that has come up here so all the courses that we are trying to do like the, the way uh, iit madras has structured is first two years you do the uh, say suppose you you join a civil engineering department first two years you do civil engineering but then the next two years plus one more year three year you can do an interdisciplinary uh, program which has some civil engineering input but also have inputs from others right so that's how the synergy is being brought in and that is extremely necessary for us to have a very solid group how can government play a bigger role in boosting the startup ecosystem and developing more research centers for holistic growth Professor Kamakoti deliberates upon the ideas and challenge areas that can be targeted with good governance. The government, uh, very importantly, let me tell you some one at least one recent thing is the semicon, right? So semiconductor, they have invested. Uh, government is now willing to put ten billion dollars as a start, right? And I, I'm sure if uh, we show uh, more uh, development in that, the government will invest more on that. right so that's a very very big start and uh, you might be knowing that uh, we had a semicon 2022 conference uh, uh, in, in last week last day of april and the first two days of may right so in in bangalore right so uh, which was attended by more than 10000 people right so and all the world's uh, major uh, industry major who's who uh, academia everybody participated in this so there is a, there is government intervention so government beyond some point Uh, can fund certain fundamental stuffs and some startups like this and but we want to have some major uh, adoption of this in the country see i government can fund basic technologies right so and we can bring the technology to forum uh, but once the technology is ready it is for the users uh, and uh, and the system uh, builders to basically take this to uh, to the next stage for example government has funded extensively on the 5g and we have got a uh, uh, yeah, standard for india inside the 5g right so now now it is for the telcos of india to adopt this and take it forward right so the government cannot do beyond that right so there is something that the government can do i always say you know from chennai if you go to the east coast road it says pandicherry is 163 kilometers it's a it's a play card right then you have to only drive the play card will not drive you to 163 kilometers so government is a play card in this case right? they have shown the way and they have put some good road and uh, if there is some problem some puncture or some accident they will send a ambulance or some things okay but you have to put your own car your own driver your own fuel and drive it okay so that is now it's in the hands of uh, major industry to have confidence when we want atmanirbharta we also need atmavishwas confidence on the indian industry uh, encourage them and take it forward and bring in indian products right and that's how Uh, the whole ecosystem has to grow and also very importantly the 
products uh, made in india need not be just bought because it is made in india it should be bought because it is well class right so so quality wise there should not be any compromise and uh, that's where the uh, academy and the startup ecosystem can put things together but then the major business has to come from with the uh, confidence that is instilled on them uh, uh, by the major industry who are the large scale system builders large scale project uh, managers who should come and adopt these things and help the industry to grow and that will be good for them right so today today they are in a big industry tomorrow that child might be having a startup so somebody should be there to mentor the startup okay that's what i say you know the karma theory that the other thing will go you know that the next generation is there so for the sake of next generation their own grandchild at least they should do this can we think of a universal design that makes the life of person with disabilities easier so many projects every project is a learning and as we do keep doing these projects we do get some ideas we borrow ideas from the previous project i'm sure uh, some uh, some aspects of the standing chair would have influenced uh, this uh, uh, kadam and that will be something common across this and so we need to capture these commonness and that is where you bring an universal Uh, a platform uh, which can address multiple such problems and make people with physical disability as uh, are yeah, in par with the person without uh, this and who is a fully healthy person uh, so uh, so my whole take here is that uh, there should be a very close interaction with the medical fraternity right uh, and uh, the, that uh, with technology can basically even see uh, early dyslexia for example if it is detected early and the student is trained on a different mode right uh, the, the, the 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 child will really grow well and dyslexia also gives uh, uh, certain uh, good things also like there can be uh, some focus and they can excel in that field so this is something these are some things that uh, uh, we need to uh, really work on uh, i'm sure uh, our medical technology uh, interface that we are trying to create uh, it wholeheartedly uh, will provide such uh, platforms in the coming years thank you for watching stay tuned with pbns for more such stories where we deliberate with experts on advanced technologies that are making lives better